What's up you guys, Rex here. So, survived another week of medical school, survived another exam, survived another anatomy practical, and excitingly, we have a big shift in how our curriculum is being presented to us. So real quick, had my third exam, had my anatomy practical, nothing too much to say. It was similar to the other exams. It's pass fail, I passed. I hope all my classmates passed. Nothing too much to stress about, we're focused on learning. So what I care about more is learning related in that we have a big shift in the curriculum. So our first sort of six weeks that our first three exams that really covered our like molecular basis of medicine that we need to know. So that was like our genetics, cellular biology, all of that stuff. And so that sort of got presented to us, not super organized in that we would have one topic would be on mitosis and then the next lecture might be on transport proteins and the next one might be on membrane receptors and and they're all related in that they're biology but not too related and at the same time we're doing histology of epithelium one day and then dissecting the gluteal region the next day and so it wasn't super tied together i guess that all changes now they're really entering physiology and so we now move into more organ-based blocks going forward. So this past week, we started doing cardiovascular, and we will continue that next week. So in histology, we looked at heart tissue and vascular tissue. In anatomy lab, we dissected the heart, and all of our lectures were about how the heart works, EKG, all of that cool stuff. It was really cool, a lot to learn. But however, I guess I'll put off sharing my what I learned in medical school being about the heart until next Sunday. You can expect something about that. And I actually want to talk about something that was brought up in this week where we did sort of a practice patient type thing of where in a group with one of the doctors and one of the third year medical students helped facilitate, three of the students presented sort of hypothetical cases and, and gave more information as we asked questions and we had to come up with a diagnosis. And so the one patient, it was like super obvious they were a kidney stone, but we have to come out with that differential diagnosis list of other possibilities because you don't wanna just get convinced and convince yourself with confirmation bias of this is what I think it is, we're gonna stick to it. <clears throat> and so the patient initially started off with just pain sort of in their lower side and so I was throwing out diagnoses of what that could be. And one of the things I threw out was a dislocated rib. And so the doctor was like, I've never even heard of that. Is that even possible? And so that was really surprising to me coming from my wrestling background where you don't really have to know the details of this, but in wrestling, especially freestyle wrestling, there's a move called a gut wrench where the goal is basically to put a ton of pressure on someone's ribs and basically dislocate their ribs, quote, dislocate their ribs. And so that's a super common thing in wrestling. I've had it happen to me a ton. It's happened to a ton of my teammates. And so you, you have like a rib out of place. It's really hard to breathe. Everything feels super tight, but an athletic trainer, a chiropractor, a physical therapist, they sort of just pop it back in and wrestlers sort of figure out how to pop each other's ribs back in. And it's like, boom, instant, pain's gone. You can breathe again, life's great. And so it was really surprising to me that the doctor had never heard of this because this is like a super common thing in my experience. So we had a little bit of a 10 minute break to mitigate Zoom fatigue and I looked it up. And so a dislocated rib is not actually a thing. It is like properly dislocated. And even looking up a sublux rib where it's only slightly out of place or something like that, really like evidence-based medicine and looking on like UpToDate and Dynamed, which are two like main clinical resources, really have like nothing about it. And when they do have stuff about like ribs being out of place or, or hypermobile, that all would be on the front side of where the rib meets the cartilage that meets the sternum in this region. But everything in my experience is talking about where the rib is meeting the vertebrae being slightly out of place. And so I now know it's never actually been dislocated as far as there's no like real x-ray evidence of seeing a rib that's dislocated except in maybe extreme, extreme circumstances. And so that's really interesting to me of, of sort of where different groups of medicine meet that if you look up dislocated rib or subluxed rib in throw in chiropractor into that search, you get a million hits. Super common for a chiropractor to identify and diagnose you with this condition that really isn't recognized as far as I can tell 
by most MDs. And that's really interesting to me. And it was really cool that I got totally validated by one of my classmates in my group was like, oh yeah, I've definitely dislocated a rib before. And I had to like, was in the most pain I've ever been in my life and call like a 911 chiropractor. And he did something, popped it back in, did a manipulation and boom, pain instantly gone. It lasted, never had a problem again. And so that was interesting. I sort of like learned this week of that there is a lot of things potentially that I might learn about that are really conflicting with what I would say is my personal experience. And you can't always trust your personal experience that like I was convinced a dislocated rib is a thing. That I have come to learn is not true. That you can't really dislocate a rib and if you can, it's in very rare circumstances. However, I also learned that there are some things that I might have from my experience that aren't fully true, but are at least partially true that Western medicine or MDs might really not know about. And so while it's not true that dislocate ribs are a thing, there is something that can happen where your rib meets your vertebrae that can be easily fixed by a chiropractor that causes a ton of pain, but after a chiropractor adjusts it, completely resolves it, restores your ability to breathe well, all of that, and you're good to go, that I'm curious if I had that pain and went in to a doctor, a medical doctor, MD, that they would sort of just say, ice it and rest it, and that's all they could do for me. And so I really guess my reflection of this is having humility as a doctor that there are a lot of areas of medicine that I may not learn about and that are true. And so there are some things that in homeopathic remedies or things that a chiropractor might prescribe that are not very evidence-based and are also not true, but there might be some things that I might learn about that they know that are true. And just having humility and, and accepting that what you have from your lived experience might not be true, and what I learned in medical school might not be the sole explanation of reality and everything that could be wrong with a person and how to treat them, that there are other things to learn. And I'd be really curious at a DO school that is more likely to use like hands-on manipulation if they would learn about a sublux rib or dislocated rib and that'd be super common. And so that might be something that like MDs could learn from their DO counterparts or if it's really more of a chiropractor thing. I don't know. So I'd love to hear down below if any of you have dislocated a rib or been told you dislocated a rib, had it been treated by some medical professional or if you know something I don't on this topic because I'd love to learn more. It was interesting to me to sort of come across that. I learned something new. I think the doctor learned something new. My whole group learned something new. So that was a great time. Super fun. Questions, comments, or concerns, I'd love to hear about them down below. If you want to hear more about what I'm learning as I go about my journey to be a doctor, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell to catch my latest uploads. As always, like the video if you like the video, dislike the video if you dislike the video. And until next time, don't be ordinary, go be great. Mm -hmm.